Hello, Flight Simmers. Welcome back to the channel and uh, very good morning from uh, Frankfurt International Airport. We are once again flying out of the uh, big Lufthansa hub. And um, yeah, guys, look at this beauty. I really enjoy the view of this one. The A330 um, colored in the Discover Airlines livery. So I guess for the European or German viewers among you, this will be... Uh, very familiar. However, for the other ones, uh, I quickly want to explain. So Discover is uh, sort of the new brand of Lufthansa replacing Eurowings. Basically, not exactly replacing it, but yeah, sort of following on the footstep, footsteps uh, of Eurowings um, operating uh, passenger services to holiday destinations mainly. And um, yeah, they have just recently started to repaint um, the fleet and this is one of the very first 830s with the new makeup and I really enjoy the view of it. I've been uh, yeah, surprised that there has been a nice repaint uh, out there in the uh, on the internet which I could fetch. Um, I will try to uh, remember and, and link the livery down below from a very talented repainter as well and um, yeah we are heading over to Las Vegas and uh, this should be a nice ride 11 hours in the A330 very much looking forward to that and uh, yeah of course we are still in P3D with this one uh, still waiting for the Microsoft Flights and release which uh, will not happen before Microsoft 2024 and I'm not sure if I talked about this before on the channel, um, but I will quickly uh, make a statement on this. So I think, oh, there's some traffic. Hello. Yeah, we're flying on Betsim. Wow, this this looks nice. A320 and the Star Alliance livery, cool. Um, yeah, so we will need to wait uh, quite a bit longer for the A330 to arrive in Microsoft Flight Sim, but I personally think that's a very, very good thing. Um, judging from the Aerosoft statement, which they made, um, seems like they are just widening up the whole scope of the project also aiming to release other versions of the A330 and I personally I rather wait a year longer for an aircraft to release and then have a really really good aircraft and also different versions of an aircraft instead of just uh, having s sort of the port over from P3D to Microsoft Flight Sim. So I think that's a good thing um, of course we, we need to wait longer but um, I think the Aerosoft A330 um, now is actually aircraft we can really look forward to uh, flying in Microsoft Flight Sim one day. Alright, so that being um, discussed, let's look at Navicraft. I have um, actually uploaded the PDF flight plan to the EFB, so we will check it out when we are inside the, the cockpit. Um, yeah, so here we are. Um, all the way going over to Las Vegas and uh, yeah as you can see fairly northerly route um, north of Scotland the even then the over Iceland and uh, crossing a Greenland seeing some ice up there then uh, over Canada yeah should be nice right um, quickly checking out the most important things so we can no that's not what I'm looking for never know where to find this there it is weather uh, jet streams always quite interesting to look at. Let's go 380. Yeah, so staying way off all the jet streams there. Fairly southerly today. Um, so this is looking good. Even there's no strong winds at all, so it might be a very smooth ride even, which is kind of cool. Yeah, and then we are departing Frankfurt. Uh, traffic, uh, um, on the Pacific center. Uh, you can see we are fairly close, uh, starting from the apron today and then flying the Oboka departure, which is the same one we just recently Please did um, on the Dreamliner flight from Frankfurt to Toronto. To so that's that's the same departure, going the Oboka one Delta, which is the longer one for the heavies. And then we will enjoy a hopefully nice view down on uh, Frankfurt uh, from the left-hand side windows. And uh, yeah, should be, should be very nice. Um, only caveat uh, for now is there's no ATC online. Uh, I was hoping for uh, a controller be to be online here on Saturday morning time, which is my, my time of recording this one. Uh, but yeah, seems like we are on Unicom for now, which is also okay. All right, so I would say let's uh, jump inside the uh, flight deck. Right, and here we are, and it's uh, looking good. Also, this is the first time 
uh, for me flying the A330 after my um, simulate or my, my hardware upgrade to the new graphics card and we are now running close to 60 fps which is just nice super super smooth and nice um, okay so I think fueling is still going on which might take forever I'm thinking maybe we will just go instant load in a second otherwise I think this one's very very slow um, okay let's um, start over here so that's the flight plan it's a bit hard to read sorry for that uh, it's not the best EFB um, but I hope you can sort of see it maybe like this Okay, so today we actually have the coolest flight uh, or coolest call sign in the history of call signs, in my opinion, since we are flying Ocean 11, <laughs> which is just so cool. Uh, just reminded me of the of the movie just when I typed it in um, on the flight plan, and I, I really need to go back and watch this movie again. Uh, very cool. So Ocean 11 over to Las Vegas couldn't couldn't really get any better than this. Um, yeah, cost index 10, uh, flight time 10 hours 48 minutes. We are carrying around 270 passengers, I think 265, uh, which you can see in the zero fuel weight. To, it's it's uh, still 20 tons um, headroom. However, takeoff weight um, just about nine tons shy of max takeoff weight. So on a yeah close to 11 hour flight, the A330 does actually come quite close to its performance uh, limitations. Still, it is uh, very interesting that we can climb up to 360 straight away. Um, A330 typically is, um, yeah, seems to have a lot of lift uh, during the cruise phase, at, at least. So uh, we can climb up fairly high. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. And also here on the view, you can see we are loading 69 tons out of a maximum 76 tons. Yeah, so fa fairly close, really, to the max uh, max range of this aircraft. Um, also, with with the payload, we have 255. By the way, is the number of passengers. Okay, so that's that. Now let's set up, and I um. Yeah, that's the one we need. Uh, glad I checked that, and. How does it work? Can we request it? No, I just I think I s need to put in the flight number, don't I? Delta one four uh, Frankfurt Unicam. Uh, we are at final at twenty zero seven center. Yes, there we are. Okay, so alternate um, LAX light number Ocean 11 once again. Cost index 10 360 uh, flight plan departure 07 center on the Oboka uh, one Delta is the one we need. Oboka one Delta insert. Um, okay, let's see. 800, yeah, that's just the first altitude, continuing on track, 069 to Delta Fox 149, maximum 220 knots throughout the turn, that's right, and then on to Metro VOR. Okay, this is uh, looking good. And then for the arrival, I think 26 left is fine on the plate 2. Arrival, and let's see, coming from Bravo Charlie echo insert let's do it like this and then we of course double check it later on copy active in it um, second in it so 155.1 and block fuel we are planning actually we're getting there we're getting there 69.2 so 69.2 Right, alternate LAX will take us 3.7 if I'm reading that correctly. 3.75% of contingency and 30 minute final 
winds we will load in right now. Like that. Shoe prediction. Oh, wow. 13. Yeah, that's quite a lot. But of course, 5% contingency, that's adding up quite a bit. So we can fly many, many approaches if we like. <laughs> okay. Very good. Uh, then we just need to do the performance. Um, so I believe SOPs for most A330 operators always flip two. And this gives us... Yeah, we don't have proper calculations uh, in the A330, but uh, it, it, w it will work for sure. So 150, 150, 156, flex temperature 40. Okay, fine, fine for me, I would say. I don't think we need to mess with anything else here. All right, and that's um, essentially all the setup we need to do on the on the FMC. Um, can put this one to 1,000, and um, yeah, I guess we can run the cockpit preparation checklist. <coughs> uh, so gear pins and covers are removed. I hope they are. Uh, fuel quantity we are yeah, still loading. Uh, maybe we should wait for the checklist. Yeah, let's wait until aircraft is loaded and then we will run all the checklists. Alright, so that's the uh, refueling completed. Now we have our uh, load sheet. Actually, it's easier to read it like this. And um, yeah, I think that's all the data we have inserted. So 155.1 at 313, 69.2. Um, I would say this looks very good indeed. Okay, so now let's make sure to uh, ground services. No doors, that's what I'm looking for. Close, close and close. Making sure they are all being closed. And um, yeah, now we can run some checklists. Or actually first, before I forget, I should start the APU. Okay, so gear pins and covers are removed. Fuel quantity uh, 69.2 tons on board. Seat belts are on. Adheres. Oh, that's not even simulated. Uh, okay, so we just believe they are all aligned. And bear reference are set 1005, 1005, 1005. Okay, so we are lucky today. We don't need to push back, so we can just track, uh, taxi straight out. <laughs> And um, so we can, uh, let's wait for the APU and then we will run the checklist for the before start. Okay, that's available, APU bleed, external power coming off, fuel pumps coming on, beacons, this is coming TA. And... Um, Disconnecting all that stuff. Oh, parking brake needs to be on, of course. Wheel shocks off. Before start checklist, parking brake is set. Takeoff speeds are inserted. Windows are closed on both sides. And beacons are on. Alright, so let's. Fire up those beautiful Rolls Royce engines, which is always a nice sound. Okay, so starter. Oh. Oh no, I'm just seeing. That's out of sync. Quickly need to fix that, sorry. Alright, here we are now. That was actually quite stupid of me because I had to restart the sim now to, to set up the thr throttles, uh, but now it works. 
Uh, at least it's looking good for the moment. Um, I hope all our settings are saved. Um, the weight looks okay. I would say that's uh, the most important bit. And um, yeah, APU is running now. So I would say let's proceed with the engine start. So starter coming on and that's still not working. And let's try this. Why is my trim moving now? Okay, not working as intended. <laughs> so we will do this one manually. Um, yeah, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the Rolls Royce starting up. Okay, there yeah, sounds on this view were not quite as impressive. Um, never mind, let's start up number one. And uh, let's get our trim fixed again. So up 2.8. Yeah, around there, I would, I would guess. 2.7. Right click, okay, get it. 2.8, so that's set. Alright, two good engine starts. So start back to normal. This comes armed. Uh, flap 2 departure. We can turn the weather radar on now. Not sure why this resets to 1200. Um, this comes to max. Bit of an odd flow here today. I think you usually would start up here at the top and then work your way down. Never mind, just doing things a bit different. Okay, flag control check. Full left. Full right, neutral, full up, full down, neutral, and rudder, full left, and full right, neutral. Okay, after start checklist, NTI is not required, ECAM status is checked, pitch trim is up 2.8, and rudder trim is neutral, after start checklist is completed. And now, let's see, taxi and turn off lights. And we will run the taxi checklist. Um, so flight controls are checked. Flap settings config 2. Radar and predict wind shears on and auto. Engine mode selector is normal. And uh, ECAM may mode take off. No blue. Apart from cabin. But that's okay. We don't really need to wait for this. Okay, let's go. And do a quick Unicom announcement. Frankfurt uh, traffic, Ocean 1 1 is uh, texting to runway 07 center via Lima Frankfurt traffic. Yeah, so here in Europe, uh, you're saying the numbers, you're saying like Ocean 1 1. But once we get uh, to the States, they actually combine the numbers, so then we, we get to say Ocean 11, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Uh, which is kind of cool. Why do I have. Ah, there's the dome light. It's been a little bit annoying. All right, so it's actually going to be very uh, short taxi only. Uh, zero seven centers just over there.
All right, here we are getting to the uh, runway. Let's go T A R A. So that's set. And yeah, very interesting. So usually we're picking up a lot of speed on idle power in the HD30. Today it's just reaching nine knots because we are heavy. And that's a really cool thing in a way. Okay, let's see. I believe um, it's all clear. It's surprisingly calm for a Saturday morning here in Frankfurt. Usually this airport is packed on every weekend. But not today. Frankfurt traffic Ocean 1 1 is uh, lining up and departing Approach 07 seven Center Frankfurt. Disregard, uh, that's the runway awareness system which still has the old runway designations. So this is coming on, 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 on like this, and so we have everything set. Lineup checklist, takeoff runway 07 center is identified, TCAS is TARA, and PAX 1 and 2 are on engines. And that completes the lineup checklist. So let's get Kraken. Alright, timer's on. Zero, seven, left. Not the perfect lineup, but that's okay. Now let's listen to the howl of the A330 engines. It's so cool. Manflex 40, SS and runway, Autotrust Blue. That's a really cool sound. Nice. Yeah, so when it comes to visuals, the A330 is really no longer state of the art. <laughs> Just notice that turn on the wing view, 100 knots. Wow, we are heavy. Look at the slow acceleration. Using a lot of runway here. Come on, we won. Rotate. And we are airborne. Wow, I think that was one of the longest takeoff runs I ever had in an A330. Very cool. Okay, climb power. And this aircraft is fighting its way up today. Chance to accelerate, flaps one. Right, and now going speed 220 throughout the turn, so we're gonna stay on flaps one for a bit longer. Climbing flight level uh, one five zero and left hand turn. Okay, leveling out, and then we can accelerate to two fifty knots. And let's go flaps up, speed check flaps up. Ooh. Camera position is being messed up, I need to fix that in a second. Alright, that was not too bad. Let's go on pilot one. Uh, 
And I would say we are on our way to Vegas. Very good stuff. Just climbing out now and then... Yeah, maybe we can even take a bit of a shortcut. Direct to Boca. I believe would be a good, good thing to do. Maybe at passing 6,000. And then we dial it up to cruise level. 360. Is that actually in line with progress? Yes, it is. Okay, let's go direct to Boca. Alright guys, that's that for the departure, I hope you have enjoyed it, beautiful 8.30 departure this morning, and I am very much looking forward to get this flight to Ocean 11 into Las Vegas, can't wait for it, um, catch you later. Here we are, finally, after 10 hours and 44 minutes into the flight. We are finally getting there. And, um, yeah, surprisingly long flight, uh, in a way. Okay, so, let's talk about the arrival, as we are, uh, you can see, flying over pretty cool terrain. Very fascinating. If I'm not mistaken, entirely downwards, down towards that direction. Uh, Grand Canyon somewhere? Or was it down this way? I can't quite remember. Anyway, it's not far from here. That's for sure. Um, just checking the map. Actually, yeah, it's down on the left-hand side. So down... This way... Oh, maybe maybe that's actually it. Maybe that's... Uh, looking straight into Grand Canyon here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, um... So, we are approaching Vegas, uh, we are planning to land on runway 26 left, and now very quickly pulling up some charts. Uh, still on Unicom, unfortunately. A bit unlucky, seems like full USA is uh, covered with ATC, <laughs> only, only Vegas is uh, spared from that. Um, Right, so we are flying the plate arrival, pretty straightforward into plate, where we will be 12,000 spot on. After that, it's radar vectors uh, for us. This will pretty much mean just continue straight um, until we intercept the localizer for 2.6 left. And this is the real world ATIS, which is so cool that we have this in, in Navicraft. Um, and you can see arrivals on 2.6 left and 1.9 left. The wind. Ah, okay, now it changed. Now it's variable 4 knots. Uh, before that, it was in a way that it's actually quite a bit of a tailwind for 2.6 left, so that seemed to be odd to me. Uh, but now it seems like there's variable winds, only 4 knots. Pretty, pretty straightforward now, nothing, nothing crazy. And I'm seeing I need to update some other values. So 3.0.2.0, let's, uh, let's do this while I move that to the other side. Meanwhile, let's keep descending open descent just to make sure that we get down there so now we have three zero two zero at 14 and wind is so let's dial it um, 0 8 0 at 4 to simulate a bit of a tailwind 
Right, Config 4, rather low uh, approach speed, 136. Uh, so that should be nice, nice and slow uh, landing. 3020, setting on all three altimeters like that. And now I do wonder why I don't have the final approach. Because I have not selected the ILS. And now we are coming from pre... No. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, in that case we can actually go direct Reno. Nav going down to 8000, speed 210 at Reno. Okay, this looks very good now. Yeah, auto brake medium is selected. Let's see, we can run the approach checkers. Spare references set 3020 set three times. Seatbelts are on, minimums are. Oh, that got deselected as well. Minimums are 2269. Fairly high, high up this airfield. 2269 is set. Auto brake medium engine mode selector is normal. Approach check is completed. We can arm those fellas. Landing lights come on right now. And then let's see. Hopefully this will be a nice landing. Don't see much traffic around, so that's fine. Wow, look at this dam over there. Fancy. Fancy stuff. Okay, sneaking towards the <laughs> final approach. Let's go localizer and that's captured straight away. That's beautiful. That's the glide slope indication coming in just now. And let's see. Go around altitude is 6,000. Very interesting go around procedure, by the way. So straight out to 3,200, which is around about 1,000 feet above airdrome elevation. Then we do a big right hand turn heading 80. Then um, one track 107 into Boulder City VOR. at 6000 very interesting okay so this goes to 6000 let's go flap 1 Las Vegas traffic ocean 11 is on a uh, final approach into runway 26 left at Vegas Alright, so that's cleared 15 miles ago. City loading in, and uh, that's what I love about the scenery. So it takes a while to load in, but we have the whole strip coming with the scenery. That's so amazing. From the top of my head, I don't know any other airfield where we are flying, s or where the airport is located so close to the uh, city center, which is very, very cool. Okay, let's see if we can lose that speed. Otherwise, I think we might want to throw out the speed brakes for a little bit. Okay, flips two. And this should give us enough drag. And also drop the gear in a second. Okay, lights, this comes on. 
we have eight miles to go. Not quite. It's like more like seven or six miles. Two thousand five hundred. Yeah, let's drop the gear now. I want to get into uh, into manual flying here. I think that's rather an enjoyable landing, so I want to hand fly as, as much as possible. Hey, flips three. And flaps full landing checklist. Ika Memo landing no blue. There it is. Landing checklist completed. Mm, there's power coming in. Always a beautiful sound. Hey, switching off, that does not work for whatever reason. Let's do it like this. My aircraft. And I really do like my new graphics card. <laughs> Flying into Vegas now with uh, 45 FPS, which is absolutely fine for flight simming. Doing this at 4K, pretty cool. 500. Approaching two, five, left. Okay, I'm seeing two reds to whites. It's a little bit of a tailwind. Pushing us along just a little bit, but nothing crazy. The input lags are so crazy on this aircraft. Feels like we're coming to die. Vegas traffic, Spirit Wings 2042, push and start, Bravo 17. 100. Minimum. Continue. A little bit high. 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard. 10, 5. Come on, let's get down there. There we are. Reverse. Reverse green, decel. Yeah, so I flared a bit too early, but it felt like we were coming in really high. Not sure if this glide slope was correct here. At least felt a little bit odd to me. But okay, landing was was quite okay. Uh, manual braking, idle forward. And here we are, folks. Welcome to Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. All right, now let's get some orientation where we need to go. We are on Alpha 7. I think we continue straight ahead, cross runway uh, 26 right. I haven't heard any announcement. I believe 2518, last traffic, starting to the start, on a stand, Delta 51. I think we can cross. There's one guy texting out towards uh, the runway. But I think we're good to go in between. Approaching zero. Wow, look at this scene, guys. It's so crazy. Okay, we take a right turn now on Bravo, and then we continue Bravo down for quite a bit. And then we will eventually park it up on Terminal 3, which is for the international ones.
Wow, look at this, guys. There's even some other heavy traffic. Uh, Iberia A350. Just after the pushback. And uh, we swing into stand Echo 6. And this is just working out. So let's kill the lights. And in we go. Locking system in place. So cool. Really a beautiful scenery. Maybe it did take the turn a little bit early. Always forgetting that this is a long aircraft at the end of the day. I think I'm gonna get end up a little bit skewed here. I don't think this is perfect. Anyhow, we will leave it right here. Killing engines one and two. Traffic, spirit wings, 2042 lying up to now let's check up our landing rate, which was 177. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Let's check Volanta giving me 167. So, yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. That's okay. I believe APU bleed beacons. Str oh, strokes. Forgot that earlier. Sorry. Um, this coming off. This coming off. And parking checklist. Parking brakes are set. Engines are off. We let off fuel pumps. Of course, need to come off. And that completes the parking checklist. Alright guys, here we are in there. <laughs> I can't really show you this parking. Oh, that, I screwed up big time on this. See how skewed this is? Holy cow. The marshal is not gonna be happy with me. Anyhow. I would say we successfully made it to Vegas in or with Ocean 11. That Vegas still is Delta super cool that they chose this specific call, 10, that call sign for, runway two, six left on the for the service to, uh, to Vegas. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Iberia is texting out. Let's enjoy the uh, Vega. Sorry, let's enjoy the Vegas trip for a little bit more. And then we shall eventually call it the day. Look at this scenery. Not too bad. Oh, I'm seeing some uh, Condor advertisement down there. Cool. Awesome stuff. And this is P3, guys. It is P3. Sometimes it amazes me, I have to say. Okay, uh, so we're going to leave it here. And um, yeah, A330 is still working good in P3. And uh, yeah, one day it's going to be an awesome aircraft in Microsoft Flights. I'm, I'm quite certain of that. But I guess we will we will have it before then um, in P3D again. So looking forward to that. Hope you guys are as well. And I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.